Hey everyone, Rob the Backyard Gardener here. It's episode six of my indoor grow room. You know, let's go ahead and do a little harvest because I'm gonna start with that today. Let's bring you on in. Obviously, you've got a pretty good uh, set of tomatoes here. You'll recall that I've already trimmed 18 on my last video. So we're gonna just cut some off here that are already all the way ripe. And I'm only cutting the ones that are either mostly ripe or all the way ripe. This will help the ones like this get ripe quicker. Got a few more down here that I'm gonna grab real quick. Matter of fact, this is pretty much gonna do it for this little branch here. As you can see, I've already cut them all off. I've also got a few more up here, but before I get up there, let me go ahead and uh, grab this last one. All right. Now up here, I have to use two hands for these because these suckers are uh, hidden pretty well. Got one here, got one here, put those in there. Got a few more, we got one back here. Oh, I already got that one. We can only let them fall, no worries. Got one here, and another one right there. All right. We'll go ahead and grab this one down here real quick, so I got them all in there. I've also got a few more to harvest over here. One there, one there. We'll let that one fully ripen. And then we also got a few more up here, and these are the ones I'm gonna cut from above and let them fall through, hopefully. One, two, three, four, five, and I think we got a couple more here. Six, and I don't know if I can get to that one. There you go, seven. All right, I'm gonna pause the video. I've got a few more to get back and back over here, as well as some up here. And even a couple of these very top ones up here, and I'll give you a quick shot of what I've got in here afterwards. So just pause the video, and we'll come right back. So we got 30, uh, 30 tomatoes out of this harvest. Not too bad. I had 18 on my last one. So 48 tomatoes in the last week is pretty good. I've left several still on the vine, as you can see. We've got uh, quite a few. we got a little darker one here. Some are going to start darkening back over here. And if we come this way, you might be able to get a good look back here, but we've got... A few more changing color back here, a few more changing color up there, and the last of the few down here. Now what I'm probably going to do guys is just go ahead and cut this off here because we don't have any more to harvest on this branch and we don't need any energy going from that. So we're going to go ahead and pause the video now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take you on a tour of the rest of the indoor room and get you updated. Thanks. Okay, so here's the rest of the indoor grow room update. They wanted to show you that the early jalapenos, the ones that I had peppers growing on when they were still premature, has really taken a toll on the leaf uh, of the foliage. Probably because I've left this actual early jalapeno still on here. But I've got three to toy with. I've got that one there. I've got one back here also uh, suffering. It does have some growing on there, but still you can see clearly not doing well. And then the one that I didn't allow any peppers on, uh, until it's matured and I've cut them off is actually doing the best You'll notice the leaves have some hard looks like hard water spots, but it's actually Epsom salt that I had sprayed on and it's dried um, We do have some peppers on this one. Let me see if I can get a good shot. There's a the three amigos right there So that's pretty good The New Mexico Big Jim looks like it's uh, done pretty well. It's gonna be ripening pretty soon Obviously, it's not as big as they can get because it's in a pot but I went ahead and watched one of Kangstar's videos on how to uh, crossbreed peppers. And this is going to be a New Mexico Big Jim parent plant with a Serrano pepper pollen. So we've got one in here wrapped up and protected as well as a second one. Uh, let's see, your second one. Oh, uh, you know what? This is why you do too. This one didn't survive. So it's all right. You live and learn. That one didn't make it, but we we're gonna have a second one. We've also got a couple of Serrano peppers right here. One right here, and another one back there. We've got several fruits started on them. I've already harvested 10 so far off of these, but we're gonna let these uh, peppers uh, continue to grow on their own and see if we can get quite a bit. My Tasmanian overwinter habanero is still struggling. It gets flowers and then it drops them. So it's gonna be a while for this, this guy gets healthy indoors, but uh, 
You know, I'm glad he's surviving the overwinter. If you recall, all the branches pretty much look like this, and now they're getting some foliage. My white habanero back here. I say white habanero, but you know what? It keeps producing these. Let me see if I can get a good shot. It keeps producing these little mini yellow habanero plants. Maybe I get it to focus. Maybe not. But anyway, it keeps getting the, to, these little yellow habanero uh, peppers instead of an actual white habanero. So I don't know. It's got several fruits on it. They seem to be, uh, seems to produce okay. They're just miniature and they're yellow. Got another white habanero up here. These fruit actually look more like a white habanero. They're a little bigger, a little rounder. They're already light green instead of dark green. And these will probably end up being white, maybe. Uh, but we'll have to take a look at them and see what they end up doing. Having a hard time zooming in on my camera, but it is what it is. Uh, my early prolific summer squash, we've got a couple here, guys. Um, these were planted 12, 13 seed. And I don't know why it's not staying zoomed. It's having a hard time. Let me get autofocus going here. These were planted on 12, 13 from seed. And um, they're doing pretty good. Starting to get flower buds. We have a couple of mystery <laughs> squashes. So when I combined, or when I repotted these squash into this soil and watered it, two more blossomed. Well, I only planted two seeds of the early prolific and two seeds of the Co Cocozella zucchini squash. One came up in here, two came up in here, and when I repotted them, two more came up. So I know one's most likely a Cocozell. I don't know why there's another one. Pretty weird. You'll remember though, I used this container for early prolific last time and only had a 50% uh, germination rate. So I'm thinking that one of the other early prolific came up. So most likely this is an uh, early prolific and this is a Cocozell zucchini, but we'll see. My Caribbean blend pepper finally got a pepper on it. Let me see if I can get a better look at this. Um, yeah, you can see it back there. It looks like a habanero kind of, but it's supposed to be a Caribbean blend. So got one on that, several flowers, it's doing well. And then finally, my carrots here, let me zoom out. These are finger carrots, little fingerlings, little two inch ones. Um, one of the runts I pulled up and it was a very small plant, very small carrot, but it was tasty. I'll tell you, these should be probably ready to pull out. What the story is on these is I planted them outside about 90 days ago, and these were 30 to 40 day uh, harvest carrots. And 90 days ago, I planted them outside, and after 60 days, they didn't grow. So I brought them inside, they've been inside for about 40, 30 to 40 days, and now they look like they would be ready to harvest had they been started indoors. So I took the run out, we had a little uh, half inch carrot, I'm probably gonna let these go a little bit longer, maybe another week, and we'll see if we get a carrot out of it. If not, then, uh, then too bad. I'll know that uh, I started them too late in the season outdoors. Anyway, guys, appreciate you hanging on with me for the indoor room update. Got lots of action going on in here, and uh, a lot of plants struggling as well, but you know, that's what you get in the indoors, and obviously these pepper, or these tomatoes are just taking up all this light on this shelf, so all the lower foliage is really dying off, but that's to be expected on tomatoes. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.